Hi, Philip. Um, very nice. Hi, to <laughs> yeah, how nice is... to meet you too. Finally, yeah. how, are, how are you doing these days? Uh, good, thank you. It's uh, like like always, you know, a lot of work, but we are we are dealing with it. Cool. Thanks yeah. very much. First of all, today your time, and um, I'm going to start with your interview. Um, yeah. So we prepare couple of questions. Um, I think it would be really nice to share with our community. So please introduce yourself. Okay, so my name is Filip Andabaka. I'm a civil engineer from Croatia, currently at Zagreb. And at the moment I'm working as a B manager at Institute IGH, which is one of the largest Croatian construction companies. And before uh, with primary focus on infrastructural projects and before of that, I worked at ATP Architects and Engineers also, which has primary focus, let's say, on buildings, residential buildings and stuff like right. that. Yeah. Right, but you are working uh, mostly as a BIM manager, right? Or am I Yes, right? yes, I'm working, I'm working mostly as a BIM manager at the moment on implementation and support developing of workflows in uh, Institute IGH. Mm -hmm. uh, a small amount of time. We, I work as a support for designers which work in this company. Mm -hmm. So I'm not currently doing any designer. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're from Croatia, but as far as I know, and we worked together previously, yes. um, you worked kind of like many different countries all over the Europe, right? Yes, uh, we uh, previously I worked in a project which are which were located all around the Europe. Same same is at the moment in IGH, since IGH also has offices uh, throughout Europe okay. and projects okay. in all could, parts of Europe. Yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about your current office, IGS, what exactly you guys are doing? Yes, uh, IGH is a company which has around 500 uh, people, uh, around 500 wow. employees. Yeah, the primary focus, as we said, uh, as I said, is uh, infrastructural projects where we design and do supervision of these projects. Also, one part, one large part of IGH are labs where we do testings of solid materials and stuff like that. But let, but let's say my my primary focus was implementation of BIM in design department, and after that we will continue with our supervision department. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So how did you gain your knowledge and experience with BIM? Well, it, when I, now when I remember how it all started, it was like, I don't know, eight, eight, nine years ago, I started to learn it by myself as I have realized that uh, it will make me much faster. Let's say, uh, I often like to say for myself that I'm a bit lazy person. I I prefer to do the uh, that my brain does the job and not my hands. Okay. <laughs> I, I like when that happens. So when uh, previously when I worked on projects, I you know you you've done floor plans, then you draw sections, then you draw elevation plans, stuff like that. But when I realized I can have it all of these, let's say three or more uh, views on a building by using BIM technology, BIM softwares, then it was a game changer. Let's say then I started to use that. And after that came all the other benefits with uh, calculations and in, uh, years after that, the automatization and genetic design, stuff like that. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, as I said, I started to using it by myself, but as I will always uh, want to, to say, I had the luck to to get to work in, uh, to start to work in ATP architects and engineers, where I had opportunity to work on a big projects and to develop very, very fast. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a lot of projects, a lot of work to be done, then you, and a lot of different questions. And when you know how to cope with that, then you have, then you gain a lot of experience that helps you in your, let's say in your work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, just I want to make sure also our interview today is not really, um, it's our own thoughts and opinion. Yes. It doesn't reflect on our current employment. So yes, um, 
but it, nevertheless, I think it's a really great experience. You worked in bigger office where has all integrated planning team yes. with architecture. Yeah, that, that helped me. Yeah, that, that helped me a lot to understand all the processes. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's easier to cope when you when you are in the middle of it. Let's say when you have practice and not just the theory. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, knowledge. Definitely. Goes right. On. That's uh, so. The it's, uh, theory is could be important, but yes, more of course it is. But practice. Yeah. All right. What is your favorite software and or if you have any programming language use or you have any preference and why? Yeah, well, as I said, I am uh, I tend to think of myself as an Autodesk Revit expert since I, that's the program I use the most and I use on a daily basis. So mm. it's, uh, let's say, more still one of my favorite programs. But since I joined uh, IGH, which does primarily infrastructure mm -hmm. projects. Now we focus our other softwares. Mm -hmm. We are still in this Autodesk AC collection uh, users. So Civil 3D and Infraworks are also now part of my daily tasks, routines, routines and stuff mm -hmm. like that. What I, let's say, what I like the most is uh, Dynamo. Since I never used, I never learned programming and uh, I always tell to myself, you know, you, you need to have the time, you need to have to find the time to, to learn programming. It's the future you need for your job. I still don't find enough time, but pro, but Dynamo makes it, let's say, easy for me to, to program or to automate some stuff that I need to do on my mm -hmm, day. Mm -hmm. Thank so you. These are the main, okay. Main so, software. Software, Autodesk software package, uh, especially yeah. Revit. And um, some help with civil uh, 3D, like uh, civil yes. engineering software. But on yes. top of that, you like Dynamo. Yes, the, these, well, you know that today you have a lot of automation tests, repetitive tests that mm -hmm. you need to do on a daily basis. And when you can automate it, then it's easier for all of us. Mm -hmm. So I believe that uh, Dynamo is some kind of visual programming and it's like a part of parametric design or documentation yes. tool. Um, it's let's say it's a programming also visual programming. Yeah. Is this um, really have helpful for everyday practice? And or how do you think in reality do parametric design or methodology help your beam workflow and your colleagues? Well, of course, yeah, of course it's helpful. But uh, as I always like to to point out, uh, we need to be, let's say, we as BIM managers or the guys who are providing solutions using these tools, we need to be very, uh, very, let's say, careful and very, very clear with instructions and the ways how these programs are, how these programs or scripts are created. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's uh, as it should be. Uh, great that uh, you can just press the button and everything is uh, uh, let's say everything will be executed by itself uh, behind all of these processes needs to be an engineer a pe person who understands what is intention how it works what's the final result mm -hmm. so yeah okay the tools are good but first of all you need to to learn the to, to the people what these tools are how they supposed to do to work and what what's inside of that script you know step by step what mm -hmm. is it doing because if the people think oh i'll press run and everything will be finished for me and then sometimes there's some error or some variables mm -hmm. have changed and they don't understand then they are then you haven't done anything for them right so, so... So it's not be... like giving them the fish, it's like teaching them how to. Fish, yeah. <laughs> so it can be very helpful, but, yeah, but it has yeah, to be, yeah. Very well controlled and organized. Yeah, you need to be, I think that we need to be very careful with these automatization mm -hmm. tools. Mm -hmm. So it's like helpful, but as a BIM manager in your position, it has to be very engineered and uh, authorized and validate yes. for your colleague to be ensure yeah. um, to uh, everything is accurate in reality. Yeah? Yes, of course, for me as a B manager, let's say for someone who uses it on a daily basis, it helps me a lot. A lot. I can control some, I have some tools which are developed especially for my work. So it mm -hmm. can help me, speed me up a lot, do some quality checks, controls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But let's say on a broader scope, on an organizational level, yeah, we need to be, let's say, very careful when implementing mm -hmm. it um, mm -hmm. in the 
that's a good, very good point yeah that's also sort of um sort of like a double side of a nice store sword that mm -hmm. can be good or can be dangerous right yes all right what is your perspective on beam and the industry well uh, yeah <laughs> well let's say uh in, in croatia where we are now or maybe some maybe some of my uh, some of other Croatian people will, uh, you know, be mad at me for saying like that. But I think that we are still a little bit behind the Europe, so uh, we have time. But in perspective for uh, for construction, for industry in general, yeah, you see, it's it's so speeding up in the last couple of years that it's even for for me who is in the let's say in the middle of it, who uh, who tries to be. Uh, in it, it's hard to you know to follow some of trends, some of things that are happening. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes yeah, you know, it's sometimes try to hard to you know to get in scope with all the work. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's necessary that something changes. Okay. Because the the workflows are let's say very slow, and today uh, our investors are you know they need they need the information. They, they ask for much more information than previously. They want it in a shorter deadlines. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a way how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So um, in reality, like it takes a lot of, it, it gives you a lot of advantage. But a lot of people also say BIM is bullshit. It's wasting of energy and time, you know. But in your opinion, BIM is, well, is today, BIM is future, right? Yes, of course, because let's say what uh, what i like there are a couple of perspectives on beam you, you see, maybe that we as designers don't have as much as benefit of, of beam like investors have mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. i see that the as from my point of view the inv smart investor can have much more uh, use of beam than mm -hmm. a designer because yep. he can he can have much bigger control of which is happening especially when it's when you're speaking about big projects of some mm -hmm. mega projects and stuff mm -hmm. like that and mm -hmm. in the end in our especially in my work or in our work it's what investor wants and what he's paying us to provide them mm -hmm. so maybe it's sometimes it's difficult to cope with those wishes and stuff like that but to be honest as i previously said when just to to state the fact when you don't need when you model something you have floor plan and you don't need to draw a section mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's say then you are already faster and mm -hmm. not just to say all the calculation bills of quantities bill and mm -hmm. stuff like that uh some other you know all the benefits you don't need now to speak all about about all the benefits of being there mm -hmm. are here but just you need to work you need you these guys who said beam is bullshit someone didn't uh, show showed them how it works mm -hmm. how it should work properly and so, what are the final results mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the implementation time is very important to begin of with course. and also there should be good guidance for users oh, who can follow the steps by step yeah, yes, right. And I really agree that uh, investors or even the owners will have more yeah. benefit um, in, in at the end of the project. Yeah. All right. Then it seems like these days, um, everyone say I'm BIM manager. Okay. I'm BIM manager. <laughs> How important BIM managers role in reality? Or do you feel the project team really respect BIM managers? Because, you know, you, you in, if you go to coordination meeting, somebody say, I'm BIM manager, but they may have no idea. In yeah. Reality, yeah? Many well, well, let's say that now we get back to this, what I said. If you, if they didn't see what are good, what are the benefits of the BIM project and good BIM management, mm -hmm. then they cannot know the what's happening when you let's say save them some money to the to the designers or the project mm -hmm. leaders or to someone when you show them how they will save time and money mm -hmm. in the end when you give them strict instructions then they will gain your respect mm -hmm. then you will gain them their respect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and let's say as my job primarily as i said, also said previously was just be manager i don't do any design i'm a support to the to the team so 
when you start, you know, they have some suspicions how it will work. Okay, we'll try to do it our way. But let's say for my, I have good positive experiences. Mm -hmm. But later on, you know, they, uh, the colleagues, all often come when they see, okay, there is possibility to, to do a lot more that they done previously, then they come by, by themselves to ask, is it possible to, oh, you know, is it possible to do this or is it possible, can we do that now? And then, you know, you know, when they knocked on your door and came with that question that you have gained their respect and they know that they have some value from, from that, what you do. Mm -hmm. So that, let's say when you are in that situation, then you know you are in a good, good way. Mm -hmm. you know, like in a good position. Are, yeah, mm -hmm. the stuff mm -hmm. you are doing is in the right direction. So. Okay, wow. That's good um, Good uh, insight on the position. So I know like a lot of people say, oh, being manager doesn't necessarily know the technology or they don't need to really know Revit. They can just manage the team or they can guide the organization that would work better. Or some people say, no, how can be manager doesn't know any technology or software that in depth how they can support us so in my opinion being manager could be sort of internal uh, consulting uh, position for the whole organization but there are many different opinions what do you think or who do you think is eligible eligible to be a BIM manager in the practice uh, in the practice, in the practice, that definitely needs to be the person who knows the processes in the inside of the industry. Let's say I think that uh, no matter how good uh, IT or programming expert you mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. if you don't know the industry or civil industry, architectural industry, MEP industry, you cannot be a successful B manager at that mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. But also to be a good in industry, the good industry engineer needs to know some, I call it IT, needs to know the software because in the end, a lot of a daily work, let's say, uh, goes out to, to figuring out the problems, glitches in the software or workarounds and, and stuff like that. So some mixture of both of that is uh, obligatory to be a BIM, BIM manager. And in the end, what, what I often like to say to the people here in Croatia, this manager thing isn't just, yeah, you have been coordinators and stuff like that. Why is that manager were there? Because B managers, of, they are often in situations that they need, where they need to manage the people, mm -hmm. when they need to manage the decisions. I often find myself in situations where I need to, or to say, to discuss to say to someone to, you know, to speak with some project managers, investors and stuff like that, to explain them some things. So you need a, to, a good be manager also needs to, to find a way, needs to know how to manage the people, needs to talk, know how to talk to people and needs to have some good social skills, you know, to have the whole package. So it's like um, really like heavy position in reality, you have to know everything, right? And <laughs> Like, well, uh, let's say it's not far, far from there. You know, as you said, you, you can see on LinkedIn or a lot of VIM managers are there. I, I, I'm glad that if, if it is true that there are a lot of us, so it's developing. But, you know, to, to have for profile of person which that needs to do this, this kind of uh, works, it's, I know, it's, it needs yeah, to, 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 the, the standards are high, so mm -hmm. let's say like that. You need to know to have many virtues to be yeah, able to do. It. I think it's that's... not that I I am complimenting you or myself. It's I think it's you know it's reality. In the because, IT, yeah. a lot, because the works which I do or you do on a daily basis, you need to have a lot of these let's say virtues. Or mm -hmm. And then, anyway, many big organizations, for example, they hire uh, more than um, single bin manager. So BIM managers, they balance each other where their strength and weakness. And I think that's a good compromisation between the real life experience and also the technological part. But the important thing from you is that that has to be balanced. That of course, yeah, person. that's, that's uh, the same thing is in IGH. Um, uh, there's, we have a BIM team, it's not mm -hmm. one man band. Mm -hmm. I have two of my colleagues 
uh, Thea and Fran, who are helping me in my daily tasks. They are, mm-hmm. let's say, they are experts in stuff like civil, mm-hmm. like in these softwares, mm-hmm. and they are experts in different branches of industry. Mm-hmm. So we try to complement each other mm-hmm. and to work as simultaneously. Uh, we work let's mm-hmm. say simultaneously on a project and mm-hmm. when i when i'm not familiar with some part of the project i ask them for to mm-hmm. help me same mm-hmm. thing is vice versa so okay that's a really good point all right so do you think students of aeo aceo industry like a building industry yeah. should learn about beam at university yeah i think yeah it's I don't know what's that situation in a, a lot of European countries. I think that in Croatia, it's not supported enough. It's, it's uh, the time when we said BIM is future has passed us. BIM is now, BIM is presence. Mm-hmm. So why you need to, uh, when guys from colleges come to, to work, they, I, sh- I think it would be helpful for them to know some basic that there are informed about these processes, method- methodologies, softwares, what investors are now asking, what is 4D beam, 5D beam, how is facility management done in these days. It mm-hmm. will help them with their, when they start with yeah, their jobs. Mm-hmm. So it sh- I think it should be obligatory. Yeah, obligatory. Yeah, I, I also studied, for me, I studied for a long time, 12 years. Um, but I didn't involved in BIM course. There was a short course, but it was only a couple of days, and I think yeah. it wasn't enough. When I was studying architecture, everyone was asking, what is architecture? And when I graduate now at work, what is BIM? So we have yeah. to see what is really better oh, in academic balance, level. Balance, yeah, balance, balance is everything, because uh-huh. the, the, the industry is changing, you know? So these are, they, the investors are not asking the same things they are not asking to deliver the same things that they asked 10, 10 or 20 years ago. Mm. So we need to find a way to adapt to those things. And you cannot, it's not you, to find a way. We need to, to learn, to, to educate ourselves, to be able to respond to these requests. Right. That's good. Good. Really good point. Um, I think there is a huge gap to understand digital workflow uh, in between senior positions and young graduates. Um, do you have a good tips to bridge them, bridge the gap in between senior um, experience and the new young graduates to use BIM together? Oh, well, uh, of course, from my, let's say, from my current, uh, current example from the company where I'm working in start, I asked this uh, senior management to, mm-hmm. give, to give us time mm-hmm. because, uh, as I like to say it, uh, there's uh, no no such thing as good and fast mm-hmm. and cheap. Mm-hmm. You need to find the, you know to to fill to fulfill all three criteria. You cannot. Some one needs to you know to have uh, one can be uh, delivered. Mm-hmm. So first of all, when you start with that, you need you need to be prepared that. Uh, uh, that you need a, a little more time mm-hmm, for the process. Mm-hmm. And after that, uh, neither can I or neither this management, we cannot be stubborn. Mm-hmm. We need, as I said, we are getting back to the, we need to find the balance. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to find the balance. Maybe there's, a, I also say, I learn every day. I learn mm-hmm. something new, maybe not from okay. me, maybe from industry stuff. So mm-hmm. we need to be prepared to adopt some other that way of some others thinking we mm-hmm. need to be able we, in the end we need to work together mm-hmm. so we need to find a way to work together mm-hmm. if we are stubborn if mm-hmm. we just go in one direction try to go through the wall there mm-hmm. won't be a good good result you know, so, yeah, so it can be done everything can be done we need to have understanding to each other mm-hmm. to coordinate a lot let's say a lot or when it's necessary on some to bi-weekly or monthly basis to see what we have defined as our goals and what have we done. Mm-hmm. Maybe something needs to be changed and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But let's say the balance needs to be uh, because I cannot uh, pose myself and think of myself as the smartest guy in the mm-hmm. uh, in the building. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I need to to listen to yeah. the needs because I'm here to support 
them, but yeah. I tend to support them through the workflows, to, you know, to get them into my, let's say, uh, how this, into my frame, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. try and show them why is this, why this will be good for you. Yeah. So yeah. to summarize, you um, keep, you need, we need some enough time to implement and yes. people need to be open-minded. So they should open to be new things and also let's say compromise each other. Um, so that's the tips to bridge them together, right? Yeah. Yes, and yes. a patient. Of course. Work. Next, I have last question, Philip, okay. um, because we have about maybe five minutes. As time goes on, I'm actually learning every day, as you said, also. Yeah. And to me, um, I'm learning these days a lot of programming and also game development uh, yeah. as a hobby. Um, if you, if there is something you wish to learn in the future or every day, what would you like to learn particularly and why? Well, uh, what I set to myself as goal is a programming language. Mm -hmm. Let's say I have somewhere in my bookmarks, I have a class which, the, you know, bookmark the class to, to join to a Python mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. But let's say after that, maybe some of my colleagues who are deeper in that say, oh, don't do Python, maybe go to C sharp immediately. But <laughs> let's say that's something I, I definitely would like to, to know, but as anything, you need to, to have time, you need to mm -hmm. be focused on that to, le to learn it properly. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I promise to myself that I will find time to, to learn that mm -hmm. since I see it becomes, a let's say, a standard. Yeah, it becomes a standard in the work mm -hmm. we do, and I think it will help me Mm -hmm. a lot in the future or it would already help me if i knew stuff mm -hmm. like that yeah. right because nothing is new for you now you have to like <laughs> yeah. something interesting you have to go <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't, you don't go. Oh. Uh, all right yeah. so i think that's really help i think programming is very getting more and more important of course it has to be as you said engineered based on experience and your knowledge uh, in our field but i i also think that programming is really um um necessary getting more and more um, important in our industry also to customize your organization to customize your thought all right um that's all for today my side and thank you very much for your interview and your time and i wish we, we could uh, catch up one day again once this uh, covid is over maybe we can catch up in um um event or like yeah. i would like to be yeah. uh, Zagreb, uh, croatia have nice beach <laughs> yeah all right okay yeah. yeah no thank you it was an honor to be your guest and mm -hmm. uh, as you said i hope we'll see each other soon okay so thanks philip then have a nice weekend have a nice day thank you bye bye bye, -bye.